Hello everyone, this is Ali Reza. I'm starting a new mini-series. Now the idea is that uh, sometimes you are playing your game and you get to the point that you say, oh, I want this thing in the game and no mod is providing it. Uh, what should I do? Well, there are two choices that you can make. First, go into forums, post your idea and hope that someone picks it up or you pull your hands in and you know get dirty and do it yourself chances are that most of the time when you want something that is not in the game by all the mods that are being developed it would be a part file you know it would be a part and Chances are, again, that some mods will help you get to the point that you want to get. And that is exactly what I want to do. I want some parts that are not in the game. Namely, parts most of the time related to stations. And more precisely, ring parts. Now, there are were parts like that before in the game. For one reason or another, developers dropped developing them. So, um, yeah. Now, for doing that, you need a few different tools. First of all, you need a running version of KSP that is stock, okay? Because you will add your mod here, and I will call mine uh, stational construction okay or stational constructs why not now the other thing other than this version of KSP is to have some tools to work with some of them are here some of them are not first of all you need uh, a third-party modeling application. I'm using Maya because I'm familiar with Maya. I tried Blender and you know Blender is free. It's a very good application for modeling, animating, all the things but uh, it's gooey. It's not my type. Honestly I tried it. I really tried to work with Blender and I was not uh, even progressing forward. I had like six years of uh, experience with Maya as an amateur user but Blender I couldn't even wrap my mind around simplest stuffs there but you will still need Blender for sure and you need these two uh, plugins for Blender just Google them KSP Blender and uh, object move IO object move and they are listed in forums and there are githubs for them just download the github as zip and you have fun with it other than that you need part tools for KSP 1.1.2 at the time of recording this video this is the latest version and this is the link you know now after that, you need two Photoshop plugins, and you can just find them by Googling um, DDS plugin uh, Photoshop. And you see this NVIDIA Texture Tools for Adobe Photoshop. You open that. And sometimes it's not coming up. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I need to run a VPN because I live in a country that is being blocked by NVIDIA. Funny enough. But long story short, uh, here you will find two, D uh, two plugins for DDS plugins, you know. And here is a guy in Skyrim Nexus. 
that tells you that, hey, thankfully, uh, oh, no, that's not the um, one, but yeah, the, the thing is that if you look around, people say that those two plugins still work with CC versions of Photoshop. And that's great, you know, you just download those two plugins and install them on top of Photoshop. Now, I already had done this step. I already have Blender. I already imported these two plugins for Blender. I installed Maya. Part Tools, I did not done anything with it. Now, when you say Part Tools, it means that you need a Unity package, you know? So, how to find which version of Unity we want? You will run this KSP stock once, then go into your data and take a look at that. Where is that? No, not that. Uh, where was that? Somewhere around, it should be here. Oh. Uh, kidding me, I didn't run it. <laughs> so you will run it first for the very first time and it will generate a log file here, output.log. Open it with any text editor. Notepad++ is what I will use during this series. And right on top you see that it says initial engine version 540 P4. That's the version of Unity that this KSP version is using, okay? So you need to download that version of Unity and install it. Ow, holy crap. Down. Oof. And because we are working with sock with few parts, it's good to, you know, go fancy all the way out as much as we can like that and hit accept there we go so you need to have this version of unity being installed just google unity this version and you will find a download link for that i already had downloaded that version of unity so um, what else you need? Well, as I said, a text editor and a texture editor. For the texture editor, I'm using Photoshop. You can use uh, GIMP if you want to. So uh, let's let me run Unity first because we will have things that we need to set in Unity too. So Unity is coming up. Okay, now we need to start a new project here. So I hit on new. First times it may take a few seconds and we will use 3D. Uh, we will call it, for example, KSP modding. And we need to put it somewhere. Now, where to put it? Um, the best place to put this would be here okay select the folder it will create this folder under that and we hit create the folder uh, create the project so now under my development I have this KSP modding and it is indeed a unity project good and uh, I don't care now let me tweak my monitor a bit. Um, that's better, okay. So, you need this scene and console and holy crap, why are you looking like that? There we go. Uh, I will keep the scene here. I always have my console somewhere like here. In your project file uh, folder, 
you will have to create a folder for, I don't know, models. And it's good to have another folder for textures, another folder for uh, materials, and then <clears throat> another folder for um, KSP no, packages. Now in here, if you take a look at our development part tools, part tools, you see that it's folders, you know? So you just drag and drop part tools here. It will import the packages, it will import the DLL. Everyone's happy now, okay? And you don't need this game, so you can close it. The next thing that you want is to import package, custom package, go to development, part tools, and this asset bundles. You just import that. And it uh, contains KSP assets, blah, 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 and all the shaders. Import. Come on. One of these days, Unity will unlock this process anyway. Now, as you see, it added these under the root. You drag and drop it under KSP packages. And now your KSP packages is indeed organized. And I think I dropped, yeah, the textures shouldn't go there. Okay. So plugins, squad core, and part tools. If you look at the squad codes, they have KSPDA, backgrounds, blah, 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 you know, it's just that. And under plugins, you have your assets and the readme, and all of these are uh, basically the DLLs. And of course, you have your shaders. So, now you are ready in Unity to go forward. And what is this untitled ID? I don't know. I never had this. Uh, oh, oh, okay. It's the scene. Holy crap. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm new to Unity 5.4. Okay. Now what? Now. You will launch Maya, and I don't have it sticked into my toolbar, so I have to find it somewhere. And it's under Autodesk. Oh, come on, Maya, okay. Autodesk Maya. Now, you may say, hey, I want to work with Blender. Go for it. You may say, hey, I want to work with, uh, you know, I don't know. 3D Max, go for it. Do use what version of application that you are familiar with. Also, you need to run Blender at the same time with Maya, okay? And I will tell you what, why. So this is Blender. If you go to file, um, where is that import? Import, you see that between these things, you have KSP MU and KSP Craft. Those are those two plugins for IO, KSP block that I showed you. Okay? Now let's import an MU file. And that would be into my desktop. Going for developing KSP mods. Now I can move back. And development never installed. These are the files that I found around, you know, that are related to KSP. So, for example, the things parts, structural, radial mount, and you see that we have three MU files. I'll import one of them. And now, that's it, you know. That's our part. Of course, it has UVs, it has texture, but 
Uh, I'm not a good guy on Blender. So what I will do, I will choose this mount one. I will go file, export, and I will export it to FBX. And now I need to export it somewhere again. So I will go back up to my desktop, de developing mods, and then to development, never install, or actually I will add a folder here called uh, FBX exports. And I will choose that. Then I need to remember it was, uh, I don't know which one was it, God. Um, uh, let me see. Okay, it was a structural radial mount. So I will create structural radial mount. And this was what? Uh, mount one okay so mount one and I hit export FBX now I come back to Maya and let me see okay I will handle that later and I will say file import but before doing the import, the very first step is to open your settings and go to meter. That's critical. Okay? So now you're in meter scale. And remember, Maya is Y up. Okay? That's important. Thankfully, Maya is close to what KSP is using and Unity is using. So that's a bonus. So now import. Now we go into our desktop, developing mod for KSP, and development, uh, FBX export, and mount FBX import. And it ports everything there, okay? Now you see that it's not centered, but I have my UV layout opened on the second monitor, and you see that it is indeed UV layouted, okay? Anyhow, now we have mount, that is the geometry, and we have a parent that is a locator. So if I hit V, hold down X, grab the cycle, I can move it to the center. Okay, cool, good. Everything is, everyone is happy. Now I have this node editor, node collider, sorry, and box. The box is the model. This is the collider. Uh, if you ask me, I would say the collider should expand or I don't know. I, I'm not happy with this collider anyway. I will delete it. So I have the model now. There we go. And I'm not sure. I think the model itself should move a bit up, like here-ish, or even a bit more higher, because, uh, you know, the center of attachment would be the place that I'm working with. And then I can just drag it out of everywhere and delete the rest. Now, I have the model. How about the textures? Well, let's take a look at the textures here. Thankfully, the texture looks like it's a TGA. Okay, so I in Maya I hit Control A and I find this texture and go to color and choose file and from here I need to go to desktop uh, development mods <clears throat> coming back back sorry and it was development um, never install. that open now I have the texture but where is my texture why don't I see the texture is that 
I need to click on this guy. And you see your texture perfectly aligned with everything. So this part is ready. Trust me, it's ready. Okay? Now, how about the attachment nodes? Well, I don't have any right now. If I go back, if you uh, control Z's and take a look, we have that is there, that is there. Well, no, I was right. Um, this does not have any proper attachment nodes by itself, but now I need to do my texture file. Hopefully, yeah, it goes there. Open. Okay. So now I want to create my attachment nodes. I will create a, col uh, a locator and move it to the part that I think can be an attach node. Okay. Top and bottom. Well, of course, uh, I'm not sure how this will work. Let me see. And it does not have any animations. <clears throat> Um, sorry. And uh, well, I I'm thinking about something. If you look, if you look very carefully, this model under these parts has a section that is modeled. Okay, that would tell me that uh, I should be able to. You know, animate these three. And on bottom, well, I don't have anything on bottom. But I would think that. Hmm. Okay. I want another attached node. be around here right there and up toward the center of this part for no apparent reason then another one to be the other side and of course I could just go to the channel box and move its X to be positive. Boom. Thankfully it's symmetrical. Good. Now I want another locator. I'll move it down, down, down toward where it is being faded. Like, I don't know, here-ish. And these will be my attach points, trust me. So I have four attach nodes here. I will duplicate this guy, move its X toward zero, so it's centered, then I will move it forward. Right there. So now I have some locators that are my attach nodes. So, come on, 0 0.001, smaller, thank you. And it's a good habit to work with, uh, yeah, your layers in Maya because now, right now, for example, I can choose a color for this guy as green and, okay, it won't show it like that anyway, but now I can't select my locators, you know, my other only option would be a hyper edit. So, I have this and I will save it. Now, where to save it? Maya. And structural. Radial mount 
as and I I'll always use my ASCII uh, mount one. Okay, now I have that, <clears throat> and I can work with this in future as much as I want. For example, I may decide that uh, I don't know. The best way to, for example, animate those things. Um, hmm. I'm thinking about the two different ways. One, separate them from the main geometry, then animate them by self manually, or use bones. I'm not sure how bones would work. So here is the thing. We go into face mode. And by the way, before anything else, go to object mode, sorry. Select the object, go to edit mesh, and there is that quadrangulate. Sorry, mesh, quadrangulate, okay? And it didn't work for whatever reason. Mesh, quadrangulate. And apply. Right. Huh. And it's not behaving the way I want to. I was never able to use that quadrangulate thingy. Uh, I think uh, the 30, 10 is, it should be 60. Apply. No quadrangulate. I don't know. I was never able to use that. For example, this is 45 degrees, something like that. It should be quadrangulated. I'm not sure why it's not doing it. Okay. Would make my life easier. Mesh. Huh. Optimize, clean up. And come on. Um, did it change anything? No. It's not doing anything. Really? One of these days I need to learn that. Quadrangulation. Um, if that's not working, the harder way would be to do it edges manually. I hate doing this this way. It would be junk. Okay. So. I hate doing it this way, but. Then let's see, selection, grow, boom, boom. No, that's not what I want. Select. No. To you, we shall. Huh. You kidding me? No. I'm trying to use this UV map. Faces and no, 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 and then holding control, I just do this. I think I got everything. Maybe. Who knows? 
Let's check. Oh, looks like it. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. <clears throat> so now I will say uh, mesh separate. And you see these poly surfaces, okay? So I will deselect this guy. Come on. So I will end up with the other ones. And I know, okay, select this one and delete history. So I will deselect that. Or actually, I can do this zero. So I just work with these ones. And now I'm fairly sure this won't work in um, Unity. Well, we will see how to solve that. But then I need to select poly surfaces that belong to one thing. And it's good to do this so that I know which one I'm selecting. No. Ah, uh, come on. Okay, maybe if I can select it this way, or better one, this way, and then control this. Yep. Okay, and then I will hit mesh. Okay, and that is combined. So I got one mesh, and I will delete history on it. So I will go for the next one, so like that, then control this and control that and combine and delete history. See how easy it is? And that is combine and delete history. So now I ended up with a few polygon faces. Okay? So now, for example, if I select this, I should be able to hit uh, E, <clears throat> insert, hold down V, take this circle and I will hit insert now. And if I rotate it now, <clears throat> it will rotate around that section. That was the whole point, okay? Uh, what one? Aerospace B9, okay, don't care. Now I will select these two and I will hide them. Of course I could do something else. I could select uh, all of them and put into different layers, but I don't care about it. Now I'm working isolated on this guy, okay? And you see that it keeps its uh, UVs, I think. Yeah, it's keeping its UVs. Good, good, good. Okay. So why did I do that? Well, if you look, it doesn't have anything below these fins, and if I rotate them uh, like uh, like in this direction, okay, so to open them, and if the player is looking from this side, that's okay. If he moves to the other side, he will see nothing, and that is bad. That is not what we want. So, <clears throat> thankfully, we have some tools that we can use in Maya. Selecting this and go to Q and select the edges. Like that. I can say that, hey, uh, I think there is something called into mesh or edit, yeah, mesh, okay. It's, and I had it, okay, fill the hole, and it didn't do what I wanted to. So, uh, I will deselect everything, I just I will select two in front, and I will say fill the hole, it's not working. So, the other one is the bridge. There we go, we have a bridge there. So, I will select this edge, and this edge, and I will say bridge, so it fills that gap. <clears throat> now comes the hard part. 
what should we do with these? Well, ah, it's one of those finicky situations. Trust me, it's finicky. Because, well, if I fill this gap with this edge, or bridge it with this edge, let's see what we get. A gap there. If I choose this one and then the other one and say do the same stuff. Now one, two, three, four. Actually, it's, yeah, five. Okay, that is bad. Hmm. Looking at this model. Edges, please delete this, delete this, delete this, and delete this. How many edges are there? Vertices. Four. Make sure you just selected the ones that you want, and there is that merge vertices. Merge vertices and merge vertices. So why can't I delete this edge? Do it. There we go. Okay. So if I go to vertices, now I should be able to delete this guy. Okay, why did I do them? Because now I've ended up with quads. One edge is one, two, three, four. So I should be able to go to face, select, not face, edge, sorry. Select this edge, select that edge, and say bridge. And bingo, we have our model, okay? Now we have an issue um, down here because one, two, three, four, five. It's something that will cause problems. So if you go to modeling tool <clears throat> under edge, um, you have this guy. You hit that and that, hit enter, that, and that, enter. Now you have a very happy model, trust me. That is, of course, working properly with your engine. So, not your ease. Actually, let me, let me see, where is this face? In my UV map, um okay this 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 oh no that's not why can't i see the uv's we shall Oh, oh, you're kidding me. Why am I not seeing the UVs here? Huh. Object mode. No, I'm not seeing the object at all, you know. Huh, there we go. Okay. So going to face, select the faces that I want. So I get a rough estimation on where this image is sitting on, okay? Because then I want to select this face and see where it is now. And I don't see anything. So this face, oh, here we go. Just that edge. That is why I'm seeing that stretch marks. Now I go to UV, okay? And I select this one and we'll drag this one all the way to the left. 
you can see what I'm doing here and select this one and drag it all the way to the left and then this one drag it down here -ish. and drag this one drag it down up here -ish. so it's not mimicking what I uh, what I thought it would Ah, there we go. Yeah, UVs are a bit funny sometimes. You need to fiddle around with them and you may not notice it, but I'm tweaking stuff here on these faces just by doing that. So be careful about what you're doing like that. So, hmm. okay, I have an easier way. I will select this face. Oh no, that would be rough. Okay, UV planner. Now it is filling the whole thing, okay? As you see, I can this guy and scale it down, 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 down to whatever proportion I want. And then move it toward this section. Move it to the proper size and I'm not seeing what I want to see. Why am I not seeing what I want to see? Hmm. Because it's rotated. So, oh, no, 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 not that. Not that. Okay. So, UV, uh, planar, and what is this uh, on the Y axis apply? There we go. That was what I wanted to see. Okay. No smaller. Move it to the size and go smaller and smaller. There we go, somewhat close to that. Hmm. And please, a smaller. that move to the side now it's UV mapping don't forget it's tricky it's always always tricky so now I can go to UV UV and I will select this part and now I I can just you know I just selected one UV why are you selecting two of them okay I want this one hey stupid thing So UV, thank you, and move it to the side, move this guy to the side, and then select this guy, it's that one to the side, this one, and that is that, moving it to the, no, not that one. Oh, but now it's hard. Now it's the hardest part. I said this one. No. Well, working on these UVs are, are always a bit hard. I think it's that. It shouldn't be that. Down. No. Why 
Why can't I see it in here? Anyways, um, face that. Uh, that face, please. And we set. Hmm. Interestingly enough. No, I don't want to do that stupid thing. So I have to just try and error to find what is going on. No. Um, this one maybe? No. Because honestly, I don't have anything. Uh, you, you see this part that is there? It's here. And I don't have anything there. To select, even. You know, nothing's there. Just there. So, paste that. And the reason is that, you know, I don't see it here. I don't see my selected face. Yeah. So I will go with another... This plane, I think, would work. Okay. Now I will go to set UV UV. And I will select this UV, W. That's the hardest one. So, I will move it toward here, and I will keep it outside, good. Then I will select this one, move it all the way toward others, keep it a bit outward, toward here, and the other one down here. Okay, now we are getting in shape, okay? Now, uh, it's always hard to work with these two hand in hand with each other, but you will learn that two monitors is your friend. So if I move this to here, if I select this and move it toward here, select this one and move it toward here, like that, and this one is the hardest one, okay? So move it toward there. Hmm, not bad. So this one, move it inside because I don't want to see that shading there. Moving it toward here and move it toward there. Oh well, we have something there, okay? And don't worry, I'm just being picky because, you know, when they are open, it's not a good texture there. So, yeah. And it's still not showing up. Funny. I'm losing it. I, I'm totally losing it, you know. No, 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 I didn't lose it. Okay. So what I will do, I don't like the stretchiness. I don't like anything there. I will find another part of this that would look like proper. So, I think come on, okay, okay, U E U W, and why am I not being able to W U? There we go. So I will move it toward I don't know somewhere, maybe. 
maybe like uh, a darker side, something like here, okay? Yep. Moving it there. Then comes the hardest part. This is the one, yeah. Moving it there. And moving it there. So what I have right now is a flat darkish color. That is more like it, you know. It's more like it. So good enough, I think. <clears throat> and don't forget, it's a radially mounted object. So if I unhide everything, uh, as I said, I was picky because of this, you see. If I unhide everything, and I will choose that part and rotate it up like this, and considering that it's just a radially attached something, you see this. And this is the closest view that you will have. Still, I think, good enough. Yep. So now that I have this guy, I don't bother with the rest of these guys. I will just duplicate this guy and move it forward. And not like that. I want the new tool to be in word. Why are you not in word? Um, move. Oh, it's in word. Okay. I want it to be object. And they are fairly the same. Object and word. Holy crap. So why are. Oh, yeah, it's down. Okay. So up like that. And a bit forward to fit the other one. Okay. And now I can find the other one and delete it. The reason I did it because, first of all, I had the pivot. Second of all, I had the bottom. That's why. Then I will duplicate this one and move it again forward. Up, 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 up. And forward and a bit up. Like that. Now I'm finding the down surface and delete it. Okay. So now I have three geometries that if I rotate them, I get this effect for opening the fins, I would say. Nice, isn't it? So now I need to put the keyframes and it's just X, so I will put a key here. Then it's 120, so I will go up to 60 and I will open them up. I don't know how much, maybe like that is a good profile. Huh? Maybe a tad bit less, maybe a tad bit more, I don't know. I think 48. And I will add a key here. Then I will go to 120 and reduce it to zero again. And I will add a key there. So during the timeline, I get the opening effect. And I will get the closing effect, okay? Now I save this. Believe me, my job with this thing is finished, really. Yep. And uh, it's near one hour, so in next episode, we will take a look at how can we import this guy into Unity, and then back to KSP. Until then, have fun everyone, bye bye.